Thank you, Elizabeth. It's an honor to be here and a pleasure. I uh, hope uh, you will enjoy uh, the talk, um, uh, which will focus uh, on two sets uh, of copy drawings depicting ancient architecture, which are preserved uh, in two Swedish public uh, collections, uh, the National Library and the National Museum of Stockholm. These drawings were made in Rome during the second half of the 16th century and were later acquired by two prominent Swedish architects, Nicodemus de Sin the Younger and Carl Johan Krunstedt. I have difficulties in changing this one. <laughs> the first set uh, housed uh, at the National Library uh, comprises 13 drawings portraying architectural fragments such as column bases, capitals, entablatures, and cornices. These drawings are interpolated into a folio architectural manual compiled by the painter, engraver, and architect Giovanni Maggi around 1614. The first part of Maggi's manuscript includes full page copy drawings from treatises by Serlio, Vignola, and Palladio, aiming to facilitate visual comparisons of different theories of the five orders. The second part contains copies of ancient Roman architecture, mainly taken from Serlio and Palladio, as well as from anonymous drawings circulating in Rome during the early 17th century, and from a now lost Libro dei Disegni, book of drawings, by the architect Francesco da Volterra. Maggi himself provides information about Volterra's Libro as visual source, through inscriptions alongside his copies. I can show you some. Cavata dall'antico e copiata da un libro di Francesco da Volterra. Dico questi due pezzi di cornice. Um, questa basa fu cavata eh, nel Monte Palatino l'anno 1571, cioè di colonna, e io l'ho cavata da un libro di disegnato da Francesco da Volterra, architetto and so on. These inscriptions often include details about fra the fragment's location, the, asso the associated building's name, according to contemporaries, and the year in which it was discovered and drawn by Volterra. All fragments are measured, and many drawings include a scale key. Some of Volterra's drawn elements can be traced back to standing monuments, such as the Adrianeum, the Bath of Diocletian, the Theater of Marcellus, and the Porticus of Octavia. Others were discovered accidentally in Rome between 1570 and 1575 during modern buildings or streets foundation works. Oh no, that was the other one, sorry. I, I, I jump on my slide. <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah, yes, yeah. it would be lovely. Yeah, that was the previous. Um, notably, five uh, fragments can be linked to works witnessed by Volterra himself. Yes, these are the ones. Um, a Tuscan or Doric base discovered on the Palatine an attic base found under a column at the Latran, a Corinthian entablature from the Basilica Neptuni located in a lumberyard behind the Pantheon, another Corinthian entablature found in the square of the Arch of Camigliano, and the Corinthian entablature discovered at Spolia Christi in the Trajan Forum. The second set of copy drawings, uh, I'm uh, introducing you today, preserved in the National Museum of Stockholm, consists of 55 loose sheets depicting plans and elevations of ancient monuments and architectural elements. These include the Pantheon, there is a quite large set on the Pantheon, um, various temples in the Roman Forum, uh, 
the Theater of Marcellus, the Arches of Constantine and Septimus Severus, the Mausoleum of Santa Costanza, the Baths of Caracalla and Diocletian, centralized mausolea and tombs in the Roman Campagna. These drawings are on large sheets, approximately 57 by 43 centimeters, significantly a lot, um, larger than typical drawings from the first half of the Cinquecento, but also larger than folio prints. Drawings also are on a much larger scale than common and predominantly employ an orthogonal mode of graphic representation. Most drawings uh, include inscriptions in French or in, in, in a slightly Italianized French, identifying the subject matter, indicating that the draftmen, likely forehands, were of French origin. The majority of the drawings are, however, attributed to a late 16th century draftman known as the Hand B of the Kronstedt collection. These drawings exhibit a systematic copying approach with precise alignment, consistent measurements, and the lack of uncertainty. The sheets bear a single watermark dating between 1570 and 1580. Hand B of the Kronze collection also produced 46 drawings depicting modern Roman architecture using the same paper, graphic convention, and technique as the drawings of ancient architecture. And this set is also in the Kronze collection at the National Museum. The most represented subjects are St. Peter's in the Vatican, the Palazzo dei Conservatori, the Tempietto at San Pietro in Montorio, and Villa Giulia. Multiple sets of nearly identical mid to late 16th century drawings after ancient and modern Roman architecture exist in other European and American collections, the most studied being the Goldsmith and Scholz scrapbooks um, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Some of these drawings were produced in Rome from around 1560 by a team of draftmen, possibly collaborating into a project to measure monuments. Others, like the hand beast drawings, were prototype copies generated in suite for educational, professional, and potentially commercial purposes. Evidence that hand based copies drawings were owned as a group by someone other than the draftman is found in their mounting. Almost all drawings were laid down onto a thick rough paper for, present for pres preservation and handling. It is quite difficult because it's, they've been then cut around, so the mounting is uh, uh, not visible from photographs, by the way. You just have to, let's say, hand the drawing to, to understand it's much thicker. And then, of course, uh, the watermarks uh, are um, uh, important, uh, important evidence. Um, the mountain uh, bearing a watermark depicting a pilgrim uh, in a circle holding a staff on his shoulder likely date around 1590 and were made in a single undertaking. It is speculated that the collector of these drawings might have been the architect Carlo Maderno, whose early project drawings share the same watermark and the same provenance as those attributed to Han B, that is the collection of the Swedish architect Carlo Kronstedt. The significance of Volterra's survey drawings and the copy drawings attributed to the hand B of the Kronstedt collection for the study of the classical tradition is arguably modest. While the monuments depicted are well known from other sources and the fragments not necessarily 
unique, these endeavors hold importance for two main reasons. Firstly, they provide further evidence supporting the argument for an unbroken continuity in the practice of copying from antiquity, both before and after the publication of printed illustrated books. Secondly, they offer insights into the practice of two key figures in post-Tridentine Roman architecture, Francesco da Volterra and Carlo Moderno. The absence of sketches and studies of Roman antiquities among the extant drawings of architects active in Rome in the last quarter of the 16th century, and I think about Martino Longhi dei Elda, Giacomo della Porta, Ottaviano Mascarino, Domenico Fontana, has generally been interpreted as the sign of declining interest in the classical tradition. Even Voltaire and Maderno, despite their significant architectural contributions, lack comprehensive survey of ancient monuments in their portfolios. <laughs> Mario Carpo <clears throat> explains the abandoning of the on-site inspection of the ancient monuments with the rise of what he terms the typographical architect when the availability of printed images, especially from works like Sebastiano Serlio's Terzo Libro and subsequent treatises by Vignola and Palladio, rendered individual survey drawings seemingly unnecessary. However, recent studies, and I'm particularly thinking about those of Caroline Yerkes, have revealed that survey drawings continued to be made and systematically copied in the second half of the 16th century. Even so, these drawings began to lose their central role in architects' education during the Renaissance, becoming tasks delegated to professional draftmen, as evidenced by the drawings attributed to Hand B of the Kruse collection and their prototypes. A contributing factor to this shift was that many architects working in Rome from the pontificate of Pius V onwards, including Maderno eh, and Volterra, were not native to the city. Volter Volterra came to Rome relatively late in his 20s from the Tuscan city of Volterra, from which his name, while Maderno came from the northern Canton Ticino. Their earlier careers involved uh, pursuits beyond architecture, with Volterra initially engaged in car carpentry works and Maderno in stucco works. Maderno's rapid ascent in the profession was facilitated by his familiar connections, allowing him to enter his uncle Domenico Fontana's architectural studio, which in the 1580s became the largest and most prominent of Rome. As papal engineer and architect, Fontana undertook various projects, including the construction of the Lateran, Lateran Palace of the Sixteen Chapel, as well as the relocation of the Vatican obelisk. Written sources indicate that Maderno initially worked in Fontana's studio as draftsman and surveyor, quickly rising uh, to become his principal assistant. By 1594, Maderno succeeded Fontana as the head of the firm. During this period, Maderno likely didn't need to create his own survey drawings of classical monuments, as readily, readily available sets of copy drawings were accessible. Moreover, he likely had little time for such tasks due to his responsibilities. Maderno's path to professionalization as an architect primarily involved practical training gained from participating in building projects managed by the Fontana firm, with Fontana's reputation ensuring his professional recognition.
Volterra's path to architectural recognition was more arduous. The Libro dei Disegni, executed between 1570 and 1575, coincided with a crucial period in his career following his return to Rome from Guastalla, where he had been removed from his position as the architect of Duke Cesare Gonzaga. The Libro likely stemmed from Volterra's desire to gain first-hand knowledge of classical architecture and establish him as an architect. His encounters <clears throat> with the antiquarian settings of the Villa d'Este at Tivoli, where he executed a number of works from 1570 onwards, the figures of Piero Ligorio and Cardinal Ippolito d'Este, likely influenced his decision to compile the Libro. The Libro dei Disegni, primarily focusing on decorative elements rather than on the orders and their proportional system, reflects Volterra's interests and influences. Diana Sculturi, Volterra's wife and engraver, and an engraver, played a significant role in translating Volterra's drawings into engraving for commercial purposes. Diana's first architectural engraving, representing the volute of a richly decorated composite capital, dates to 1576, one year after the latest date mentioned in the Libro. According to the accompanying inscription, the volute taken from an ancient capital of a Numidian stone column located in St. Peter's in the Vatican, I quote, was drawn by Francesco da Volterra and Battista di Pietrasanta for the common use of students of this art, end quote. Another print representing an Acanthus scroll incised by Diana is also said to have been designed by Diana's husband, Francesco. Through these engravings, Volterra showcased his skills and antiquarian knowledge, eventually garnering his first important architectural commissions from the Galli, Caetani, and the Salviati families. In conclusion, Volterra's Libro and the copies attributed to Handby of the Kronstadt collection demonstrate that, at the end of the Cinquecento, survey drawings of classical monuments and fragments continued to be made, copied, and collected. These drawings complemented architects' compilations of visual sources, competed with prints in reproducing depictions of architectural details at the larger scale, and offered avenues for professional recognition that printed images on alone could not provide. Thank you. So thank you, Anna, so much. Um, uh, for those of you online, um